Good morning, traders. Chris Bess here with Traders Profit Compass with another edition of Before the Bell for Friday, September 16th. It is 7.11 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run your player at 1.5x. Uh, taking a look at futures, a lot of red across the board. Uh, equities look for the most part to be down about uh, 7 tenths of 1%. Uh, oil was ticking a little bit green, but nat gas was down. Um, on the macro front, we've got the University of Michigan consumer sentiment. That'll be important. Uh, they always ask that question about inflation expectations. Seems to be closely watched by uh, those in the know that track those kind of things. Also, we've got the big OPEX this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Uh, so uh, that could set us up for a lot of intraday volatility. I mean, yesterday we saw a lot of intraday volatility, and it's it's always a wild card. It really is. Um, sometimes we have these days, and they turn out to be nothing burgers, and then other times, you know, dramatic things happen. So be aware of that. Also, uh, last night, uh, FedEx. Um, might even have been this morning. I don't know exactly when they reported, but they're down about 20%. They they missed on their their numbers and pulled their guidance for next year, just saying, you know, general economic slowdown, blah blah blah. And of course, that's that's rippling through the uh the uh you know, the cyclicals, the uh stuff tied to the real economy. Uh, that's going to set up a really nice gap for down the road. So if you want to go over to the FedEx chart and put in your gap and then alarm that level, we can do a um, it's a good setup for a a range break trade. So a bracket trade, if you will. So uh, that'll be a good one. I'm sure UPS will probably trade down on that news today as well. So uh, keep those in mind. So uh, diving into the charts, not a lot of action on the dollar. It's just hovering here at a uh, little above 109. Remember, we've got the FOMC next uh, Wednesday with a rate decision, probably going to be 0.75. Uh, uh, 75 bips or, or possibly even 100. What's happening here is uh, in addition to a lot of other things is, you know, there's there's getting to be quite a rate differential between U.S. and other, you know, sovereign country debt. And, you know, whenever you get those positive rate differentials that the foreign money wants to come here to, you know, park their park their assets in the dollar. Right. So, and as a consequence of that, uh, bids it up. So, you know, after the rate announcement is made next week, especially if it's beyond expectations, I think expectations are for uh, 75 uh, bips. If they go 1 or 125 or something like that, then you're probably going to see a USD moonshot. Uh, TLT is just hovering here at 108. I think uh, price obviously knows it's important. Uh, we've spent, let's see, a week in and around this level. I think it, it still remains a very important pivot point because you can see we've already validated this low back here in June. That corresponded to the uh, June low in equities they bounce together and so uh, I think it it's going to be important to watch and track uh, TLT so we're right here at uh, right here at the 108 pivot uh, VIX up a little bit but not up a lot uh, I did look this morning on the red uh, we're up here trading up about a dollar in the 27 range as I as I keep uh, suggesting, I'll say it again. If you can keep TLT uh, 
in the VIX as part of your trading matrix, just to keep an eye on general direction. I think it, I think it will help you uh, have a little bit more confidence about taking uh, intraday type active trading positions because you'll notice on certain days when uh, TLT ticks down, that's bearish for for um, uh, equities, right? So and, and vice versa, and then so if you've got if you've got a bearish trend on on bonds, and you see the VIX, you know, gently rising, you know that doesn't lend itself to being long on equities. What you may want to do, and this is all personal style, is say, hey, I want to I want to target a short into resistance rather than trying to be long at support those are just ideas but I, I do find it I do find it helpful to have those on the on the board uh, Bitcoin is just kind of hovering here uh, we talked about the key levels yesterday we're down here around 19600 little range up to uh, uh, 19800 you'll have to decide uh, how you how finely you want to trade this if at all but you can see a ledge here right at uh, what is it at nineteen five forty right here uh, you've got a lot of reactions along that line and if you were inclined to take a short that would be a place to do it and then you'll have a level of support down here around 250 dollars lower but then after that it'll fall away and you've got this undercut area down here where it saw oh, let's say roughly 18,600. so i think this level here this uh, 19 540 is going to be uh, a very objective level for you uh, oil bad day again rejected at the 20 slammed back down to 85 I mean it's just chopping around so we had an undercut of support and then a failed breakout try so uh, you know if you're you're into trading oil right here is going to be your pivot yesterday's close and then a break below would target these lows of the uh, other day down at 82. If it can hold it, you can bounce up towards 88. And, you know, if, if just, I'm just saying it just in case you don't know, USO is a, is a tradable ETF for oil and the, uh, futures contract that I like is um, slash M as in Mary, C as in Chris, L as in Lisa, MCL. That's the that's the mini baby oil contract, one tenth the size of CL, and that makes a heck of a difference. You can get in there with one or two micro mini contracts, and I guarantee you. When price is moving like this, uh, it'll give you plenty to think about. So uh, I, I think I think those micro mini futures contracts and they're they're broadening out to everything because they've had such wide adoption for people like us that don't have you know thirty four thousand dollars in margin for one contract. These micro minis can uh, get you in the ball game for for trading you know the dollar and treasuries and and uh, qqq and spy and small caps so i think they're a great vehicle and uh, i highly suggest you check them out and if you do get your uh if you do want to get your feet wet just use one contract 
that'll be plenty. And just as a side note, the futures don't have those uh, pattern day trader restrictions. I mean, if you want to, you can go in and out a hundred times in a day um, with no with no restrictions. So uh, I think they're a good good uh, vehicle. Nimo, nothing happening, drifting lower. Uh, Namo drifting lower, but still not at extremes where they're going to be helpful. Spy, I mean, it's all about 390. I mean, we're trading below that now in the pre-market. You can see we've got some gaps to fill. And you can see the uh, volume over price bars here kind of uh, fading away. So if this thing gets, you know, rolling downhill, you'd be looking at targeting these gaps at 385 and then 380. Not, not a lot of technical support to hold it up. Um, I still think there's, there's, a, there's a put wall at 390 on SPY where there's a, a, an, an inordinately large amount of uh, uh, puts that reside there. In the back of my head, I still, I still think the market is going to find a way not to let those guys win. You know, maybe a, a move here you know, out of the gate down and then just rip it the other way. So, uh, you know, as they close the market above 390, of course, all these people's puts would expire worthless. Uh, you know, that's just what the market does. So um, trade level to level. I mean, you, you can't trade on that, uh, that hypothesis that I had. You can't be sitting there, oh, I'm going to take a long, I'm going to take a long, I'm going to take a long when it's rolling over because you think that the market makers are going to get it back above 390. What you want to do is just be ready for a potential, be, have, be, have an open mind towards a, a market reversal because if you come down and then you recapture 390, that's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be an important buy signal, right? Whenever you lose that key level and then come back and uh, recapture it, uh, that that can be a powerful move. Here's just the 60-minute chart. You see we're back down here at 390. That's what's got a hold. And then you've got a downtrend line. So you've got plenty of uh, uh, potential buying locations on the way back up. And then, you know, if you want, if there's a, I want to go back to this uh, chart here. Just because it's a little bit clearer. What if there's a big red candle out of the gate down to 385? And then they rally it up to 390 and it stalls. What would you want to do there? So a breakdown and a back test, right? It would be objective to take a short there because, you know, that's such a common move. So if, if we go down and then come right back up but can't get over 390, then you may want to try a, um, a, a tactical short there. Moving on to the Qs. We had talked about 295 being important, but we also talked about this prior low at 290 that where price may want to come down and validate that. <coughs> well, that's uh, exactly what happened. So now we're down here at 290. Uh, I think anything below 290 is going to go to 285. Notice that's uh, exactly where the uh, we've got two high volume over price bars here. And so I would regard uh, 285 as more or less the, 
the last train out of Dodge. It, you know, if it doesn't hold that, I mean, you you got almost next to nothing down here in terms of volume over price to hold it up. Plus, you've got an open gap. So then that, I mean, I, I think even right now, the, the door to the June low is open, uh, but <clears throat> not wide open. Uh, the door has, has been unlocked and there's a crack there. But if this thing starts rolling downhill and you lose 285, they'll be they'll be kicking that door down. I guarantee you because once you're below the high volume bars, it can go really really fast. Uh, and here you see the zoom in, pretty tight in here, but basically saying the same thing. We've got two little gaps. In fact, this little gap here probably got filled yesterday. Um, I'd have to look at that on a five minute chart, but then we got one more and then we got that 285 level. There was quite a bit of travel yesterday in IWM, actually in a lot, a lot of stocks, a lot of intraday vol that if you were good, you know, playing ping pong, buying support, selling resistance, you could have done uh, really, really well yesterday. And you can see that. Uh, price on IWM came all the way up, actually got a, all, all the way up to about mm, 184.50, <clears throat> and then they brought it back down. I think you can use this uptrend line as a nice uh, pivot area um, right in here at 180. Below that, it's going to open up the door to 178. And then that's the main pivot because you can see all these reaction levels along that line support here. So technically speaking, uh, this is supposed to hold. And if it doesn't, then, you know, that should put off the light bulb in your mind that you have a, a short against 178 if this were to break and then come down and uh, fill these gaps and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then you can see all this 182 support, right? You just see it just, I mean, we went up to the top and down to the bottom a couple of times yesterday. So, I mean, like I said, if you're good at toggle, you know, toggle trading back and forth all day long, then you made, you made a decent amount of money. If, if that's not your thing, it was a frustrating, frustrating day. Meta, <clears throat> we talked about this in depth yesterday, so I'm not going to go through it uh, a lot now, but we're, I mean, price, price knows this level, right? This, uh, this level right in here at 149.55, it, it knows what it's about, right? Look at all those. I can't even count them all. They're so small. Um, so you get a break below that. You can get short against 150. If there's a rally, uh, it's got a chance to, to do a, uh, a back test, you know, break down, back test into the, into the uh, downtrend line and all this overhead resistance. That would be a perfect place for it to fail and then come back down. So whenever you see a breakdown from a big range, um, be prepared for that check back. You often see it just like you often see a check back on a on a breakout to the upside. You know, here uh, breakout came back. That's normal. But what's not normal is it failed. So. Um, but price often does come back to the trading range before proceeding in any given direction. Um, Apple, we talked about this yesterday, kind of losing the thread. This was a big level here, this 154.50. Uh, uh, then we broke and made a uh, newer low. You've got the levels down here that I've given you, 150 and a half. And then right on down the road, if this thing rolls over. Now, what would be really bullish is if uh, maybe we come down 
to 151 and bounce hard and get back above this 154.50, that would be that would be uh, bullish because we will have uh, recaptured these high volume over price bars and recaptured this uh, resistance level. Uh, Tesla. This chart looks different. It really looks different than the other ones that we've been looking at. It looks different than the indexes. It looks different than Meta and Apple. Uh, very resilient. Now, I don't know where it's going to open today, but has not had the big, you know, slam sell off. So I don't know what's happening. Um, I find it hard to believe that this is all, all retail, right? With no institutional buying. I don't know if that means Elon is in there doing some buying or some other, you know, large fund or whatever, but this looks a lot more constructive than the other uh, charts that we've looked at today. So right here, I think uh, 304 is a pivot uh, on any down move. I would want to hold the bottom of the, uh, this gap has been filled, but there's some muscle memory there. I would want it to hold 298 and then certainly uh, would want it to hold uh, 296. But if, they, if this thing does hold 304, then uh, 312 is uh, your target. Microsoft lost that uh, 252.50 level. Now it's down here at 247. I've got the lower targets marked in at 242 and 235. So uh, all these mega caps are generally having trouble and uh, definitely rolling over. Amazon has kind of held the line. We had a prior low that hasn't been broken yet, but uh, I think your pivot today is 125. And then you uh, keep in mind this $2 gap uh, below that needs to be filled. And one thing you can watch for is, let's say price comes down and fills this gap to 122. What you'd want to do down here at 122 is look at PPO and look at RSI and see if you can see positive divergence forming because let's just imagine this price came down here so we'd have a lower low right here was the prior low here's the new low here but if we look up here and see PPO at a higher level and we see RSI at a higher level, that's your, you know, that's your divergent low with underlying buying pressure. So that might end up being a good long, uh, not only because of that, but because the technical box of filling that gap will have been completed. And then you just set your stop just a little bit below 122. And then, you know, if that does not work, then just uh, opens up more downside. Uh, Google down 2%. We talked about yesterday a swing short against 105. If you got that, great. Stay in it. Uh, if you didn't get that, you can... Well, you can still get short against 105 if you've, you know, if you're willing to take $2 worth of heat, set your stop just above 105. And remember our, see here, our measured move target now is 91. So even if you, you know, give up $2 of risk for a $13.50 move, that's still a good uh, risk reward ratio on uh, on Google if you want to take that take that shot. Uh, Netflix is another one that I'm scratching my head wondering what's going on. It looks totally different 
than the other charts? Uh, is that because they're going to be getting more money for ads? Uh, does somebody know something as far as a, uh, a takeout by a, a Disney or a, God, I don't even want to venture out a name. Who, who knows who it could be or why? But uh, it was up 5% yesterday, and that's after a big pullback into the close. So it rocketed right out of the gate and actually got up above 240, and then that weak close kind of doomed it. But this thing looks different. Um, and it seems like something's going on. I, I didn't see anything in the option chain uh, to, I mean, it was very bullish, but not like one guy. A lot of times if you catch it or you see it and you see uh, one guy out in left field, like you see somebody buy, uh, you know, the stocks at, at you know, 235 and you see a guy getting $260 calls for tomorrow for for a nickel and he buys a hundred thousand of them and the stock's been acting weird that may be something you want to follow right uh, just as a lottery ticket because I mean you'd be amazed at Somebody always knows when something's going to happen. That's my point that, uh, you know, when a big acquisition is announced, you go back and look at the option chain the night before, and, you know, at 3.59, they, they come piling in. And then at 4.15, their five cent options turn into $28 or something. Just it's, I mean, it's sick. So I didn't see that yesterday, but my point is while the whole market is getting wobbly, this looks like it's actually getting stronger. So have your alarm set, uh, you know, 234, 240, and 247 are, uh, in my mind, what the important locations are. Uh, SMH, semis. Trying to cling to this 204, uh, I think if it breaks here, you're going to come down uh, to 200 rather quickly. And then we actually looked yesterday. <clears throat> You've got a prior low back here at 190. So you could come down to 200, do a little back test, then roll over and go down. You know, anything can happen. But I, <clears throat> what I do know is that to keep this thing bullish price needs to stay above 204 and it uh, currently is not doing that uh, we're a little bit below we're at 203 so there again the door is cracked open are they going to drive a mac truck through it this afternoon and just bury it or are they going to hold it together for the weekend and have everybody and their brother biting their nails you know what's going to happen uh, you know, Sunday night, Monday morning after OPEX rolls off. Uh, ARC had a good day yesterday. Um, not particularly ARC F, you know, moving up a little bit. We're still inside the trading range. So if you're interested in that, just have your alarms set, you know, 1875 and let's call it 17 for the midpoint. Uh, ARC-G, though, was up 1.7% with the market down. This thing is threatening 38 again, uh, but now you've got a cluster of moving averages uh, below price, so that's a positive. Maybe we get uh, uh, kind of an explosive move out of this 38 range. I think it's worth a, um, a worth, worth a, an alarm there especially considering the relative strength of this stock yesterday compared to all the other ones. Same thing with uh, flagship fund up 2.2%. Now it came up to the top. You can see right here came up to 46 and pulled back a little bit.
But this this does look like it has the potential to pop out. And I think all, all you do there is you set your alarm at 46 and you're ready to go. Um, and if you want to swing it short, you know, if you, if you see this come up here to 46, install, 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 you can take a short there. I mean, it's very objective, right? If, if you're bearish on the market and you see your stock stalling right at resistance, you can take, you know, you can be nimble, take a short there with a stop just above and hope for a move back down to the, either the midpoint or the bottom of the box. So it just depends on your state of mind. And what I like to do with that is, um, you know, what are the other arcs doing? What's Tesla doing? What, what are the Q's doing? Because I think these are, you know, a, a horsepower version. And I think on the K, on the flagship fund, what you're seeing here is tied into uh, Tesla. It's still a large, I don't think it's their largest, but I think it still is a large position in their, in their portfolio. Arc W up 1.31, still hanging around the midpoint. Uh, I think if you want to be in it, you just be in it long against 250, 250 and see if you get a move back up to the top of the box. So that's that. Um, I think the big thing today is be aware of the potential for increased volatility. Uh, be aware of those uh, prior lows where... Uh, the floodgates could open lower, but also be aware of the trickery ran. Uh, you know, you see, you know, you see that first red bar down below a level, and then they quickly reverse it and recapture it. Be nimble and honor your stops because a lot of weird stuff can and, and does happen on a day like today. Uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in put premium down there below 390. They don't want those to win. Now, that doesn't mean they won't win. You know, uh, it's not a given, but there'll be market forces moving, moving these stocks around. And so just stay nimble with your, with your positions and certainly honor your stops. And hey, if you get into the morning and just nothing's quite working, just, just put it away, right? Instead of getting, you know, building that frustration, that frustration, that frustration, you know, you can just feel the, your head starting to pop. Just, just let it go for the day. Um, you, can't, you can't win in the market every single day. And there's just certain days where... Uh, every trade you put on turns out to be a big winner. And then there's other days when you, uh, no matter what you do, uh, it's a loser. And so on a day like, you know, a Friday quad quadruple option expiration, if things aren't going your way, dive into some chart work, read a book, go for a walk, head to the beach, whatever you may want to do. Um, besides beating your head against the terminal, uh, trying to, trying to do trades that just aren't clicking. So I hope, I hope that's helpful. So let's see how it goes this morning and, uh, see how OPEX goes as well. Uh, let's wrap it up there. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.